I call the member for Krangamite. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker. The National Disability Insurance Scheme is arguably one of the most significant programs in the history of the Australian Government. And, um, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, it is, uh, it is with great celebration in my community, in Geelong and in Colac, that we have begun to roll out the NDIS. Uh, I was in fact in Colac on Friday and visited uh, the new office of the COLAC National Disability Insurance Scheme and I met with the National Disability Insurance Agency Area Coordinator Shri Barry and it really is wonderful to see the investment that is happening in the COLAC community and across the, the greater Geelong region in my electorate of Karangamite. Uh, I am a passionate supporter of the NDIS and uh, this government is a passionate supporter of the NDIS. We have supported the NDIS at every step of the way and we remain committed to rolling out the NDIS in full. Uh, it really is fantastic to see that already, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, the NDIA and the scheme that underpins the NDIA is helping already in the Barwon region, the Barwon trial that's been conducted, some 2,700 people. And in Colac alone, there's about 340 people that have done their plans and are in the process of having these important disability services delivered to obviously people with a disability and uh, their families. And Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, this is making a profound difference. Uh, there are six people working in Colac and there are another five people to come. And the Colac Herald did a terrific little article about, uh, about the new office that's opening today and there's a great investment. So there's great excitement in, in Colac about the investment that the federal government is making um, in the National Disability Insurance Scheme. And of course it was with great pride on the 30th of April uh, that Prime Minister Tony Abbott, along with uh, Premier uh, Dennis Napthine, officially opened the new national headquarters of the NDIA. And now the NDIA will generate about 450 jobs, direct jobs in total for Geelong by 2019 and 20. Um, already there's some, there's some 125 jobs are being created and that number is expected to rise to 300. So not only is this a wonderful scheme for people with a disability, their families and their carers, it is also wonderful for jobs in our region. So positive for jobs in our region, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker. And already we are seeing what a difference this is making. A number of weeks ago I visited uh, Kids Plus Foundation in Geelong. This is a wonderful agency giving help to young children and to babies, principally with cystic fibrosis and other similar conditions. Um, up until recently they've had no government funding and now with parents coming along with their NDIS packages under the trial, they are getting incredible help. So uh, it is wonderful to see how, what a significant difference that this is making in uh, the Karangamite community and across the greater Geelong region. And let's not forget that from the 1st of July 2014, NDIS trial sites will be in, places, in place across all states and territories except Queensland. Queensland will join the NDIS in 2016. Um, new NDIS trials in Western Australia, the Australian Capital Territory and the Northern Territory will assist around 14,000 people with permanent and significant disability and more than 35,000 people with disability will be assisted through the NDIS trials. And once fully rolled out, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, the NDIS will assist around 460,000 Australians with a permanent and significant disability at a cost of uh, $22 billion. Uh, so this is a wonderful initiative. I'm so proud we are funding uh, this program and that we are getting on with the job of looking after people with a disability. And I, and I asked the Minister today to confirm the government's commitment to the NDIS over the Ford estimates and confirm that this is a fully funded policy. Um, can the Minister also confirm that the government has reversed the previous government's decision to apply the efficiency dividend to NDIS support packages and uh, the Sector Development Fund. I think the call the Minister. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr uh, Acting Deputy Speaker, and uh, I commend the member for Karangamite for 
her great interest in the NDIS, uh, the National Disability Insurance Scheme, and uh, of course the location of the NDIA, the authority which is responsible for the scheme, uh, in Geelong. And uh, of course her electorate of Karangamite uh, includes part of the great uh, city of Geelong, uh, a, a very impressive uh, booming city um, in Victoria. Um, so far as uh, a number of these sort of services is concerned and her consideration for this is something which is uh, very uh, significant. She talked about uh, Colac. Uh, it's not, Mr Deputy Speaker, I travel everywhere by bike, but the last time I was in Colac I was on my bike as well. Uh, and indeed I met with a group of, uh, I met with a group of carers and a, a group of people uh, interested in disability uh, there. Uh, I remember meeting at, uh, we met at one of the motels in Colac on, I think it was a Saturday or Sunday morning, and there was a large group of people uh, who were very concerned about uh, these issues about disability, and uh, both uh, myself and the Prime Minister, again on that occasion, uh, spent some time with them, listening to their stories and what they were concerned about. And this was at a time before the NDIS had uh, actually been um, thought of and brought into operation, but it's for those sort of people and their families and their carers and their friends about them that the NDIS uh, is such a scheme which is time has come. And I, can I pay tribute to the previous government for their commitment to the NDIS as well? This is something which has been bipartisan in Australia. Uh, it is one of those things which happens only every so often in this country where uh, a major social change has come about. Uh, we are in the throes of the implementation of it. It's going to take a number of years. And the honourable member talked about uh, the trials which are occurring in the Barwon region uh, in Victoria and elsewhere around the country. And the whole purpose of those trials is to provide us with the information that can help us to actually roll out this scheme in a way which will uh, work for the people that it's aimed to work at. Uh, the Productivity Commission identified some hundreds of thousands of people that uh, this was intended to uh, apply for. The reality uh, in Australia is that if you are injured by uh, the result of a transport accident, you're, you're injured in a vehicular accident, uh, then uh, state accident compensation schemes around the country apply to those people. But if you had a disability um, through some other cause, uh, no fault of your own or, or whatever, a disability through some other cause, the reality was that you weren't in the same situation uh, as an individual and as the family and friends of people uh, for a person in that situation. And this is aimed at providing equality of treatment, if I can put it that way, and equality of outcomes in terms of the care that can be provided for people who have a disability. So this is a very important development. It's going to take time, and there is a parliamentary committee which oversees uh, this process in which both the Labor Party and uh, the coalition and uh, others are involved in, because we believe, and we argued this for a long time in the parliament, we believe that this is too important to just be the subject of partisan politics. And that's why, when we were in opposition, we threw our support behind this proposal. That's why now in government we are fully committed to the rollout uh, of it. The member uh, for Karangamite uh, mentioned the um, efficiency dividend, and uh, the reality was that uh, there was an efficiency dividend applied to uh, the NDIA, on the NDIS, effectively. Uh, and this was something which we thought was inappropriate in relation to a commitment to rolling out this scheme. And in this budget, uh, the efficiency dividend of $44.9 million, which was effectively a cut uh, to the NDIS, has been reversed in this budget. So I think that's an indication, a clear indication, that this government is fully committed, fully committed to the rollout of the NDIS. And if anybody ever suggests anywhere in Australia that the coalition is not committed to the NDIS, uh, then they're frankly telling porkies because we are committed to the NDIS. We will see it rolled out. We, we don't underestimate the difficulties involved in the rollout of this scheme, and that's why the trial sites are so important, to provide the learnings for us over the next few years as to how this can best work. And already there's some results in from the first couple of quarters in terms of the results uh, from various trial sites around the country, and some of those results have been mixed. And what we have to learn from that is whether or not, for example, uh, the results, which are not as good as we might have thought, are simply a product of the start-up of a new system and whether or not these things will be ironed out over time or whether they are longer-term issues that need to be addressed in, in terms of how the system is put into operation. But can I assure the member for Karangamite, who is a great supporter of the NDIS, uh, and indeed all members of this House and indeed the Parliament and the people of Australia, that the Coalition is 100% committed to the implementation of the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Okay, now, order. I now need to point out